Today is the last day uh, in this end all <coughs> and today I will be telling you about the last uh, center of Sahasrara. This last center, the Sahasrara is contained in the limbic area of the brain. Our head is like a coconut. The coconut has the hair and then a hard nut and then a black covering and inside is white shell of coconut and inside is the space, the water. In the same way our brain is made. That's why coconut is called a Shri Pala. Is the fruit of the power that is Shri. Shri power is the right side power and the left side power is the Lalita power. So we have two chakras, left side here is the Lalita and right side here is the Shri chakra. These two chakras are working out the right side Maha Saraswati's power and left side Maha Kali's power. Now the central power is the Kundalini. That has to rise and penetrate through different chakras, enter into the limbic area and enlighten the seven pithas, seeds of the seven chakras. So it penetrates through six chakras, enters into the limbic area, enlightens all the seven pithas in the brain, which are placed along the midline of the limbic area. So we start it from the back, is placed here, at the back is the Muladhara chakra. Around it is the Swadhisthana. Then is the Nabi. Then the heart, then the Vishuddhi, and then the Agni. So, all these six centers are co combining to make the seventh center. This is a very important point which we should make. Now, the Shri Chakra is the right side working, and the Lalita Chakra is the left side working. So when the Kundalini doesn't rise, then we do with our right side, our physical and mental activities. So our brain is doing right side activity and that's why our brain is like Shri Pala. Sahasrara is actually is an assemblage of these six chakras and is a hollow space. On the sides of it there are one thousand nadis and when the light penetrates into the limbic area then the enlightenment of these nadis take place 
and you can see them as flames, very gentle flames burning. And these flames have all the seven colors that you see in the Vibhjiya. But the last one ultimately becomes again integrated and it is a crystal clear flame. All these seven lights ultimately become crystal clear. So you have Sahasrara with one thousand petals as they call it. But if you cut the brain in a transfer section or horizontal section, you will be able to see that all these nerves are built like this along the limbic area, all of them are like a petal. And if you cut it like this, you will find that there are many nerves in every bundle of nerves. So when it is enlightened, you can see Sahasrara as a burning bundle of flames. When I am speaking, you should not do all these things, please. They are still coming and just disturbing. It's a very deep subject. So the, when the enlightenment of the Kundalini takes place in the brain, then the truth is perceived through your brain. That's why it's called as Satya Khand, means you start seeing the truth perceived by your brain. Because so far, whatever you see through your brain is not the truth. What you see is just the outer side. Say you can see the colors. You can see the different aesthetics of the colors. You can see the quality of the thing. But you cannot say whether this carpet has been used by some saint. You cannot say whether this is made by a devil or a divine person. You cannot say that this gentleman, is he a good person or he is an evil person? You cannot say if this deity has come out of the Mother Earth or not. Also, you cannot say about any person who is your relation, whether he is a good relation or a bad relation or what sort of a person he is, whether he goes to wrong people or to the right people, whether he has connections with the wrong side or the good side. Here good means divine. So actually you do not know anything about divinity with your mind, nothing. Nothing. It's impossible for you to judge a person about his divinity unless and until the Kundalini reaches at least this part, which is the limbic area. You cannot make whether a person is real or not, whether a guru is real or not. Because divinity cannot be perceived through your brain. unless and until this light of your spirit shines into it. Now the spirit is expressed in the heart, 
is reflected in the heart, the center of the spirit we can say is in the heart. But actually the seat of spirit is above, here. Uh, that is the spirit what we call of the God Almighty, who say, whom you call uh, Parvardhikar, you call him Sadashiva, or you can call him uh, the Rahim, and you can call him by many names which are said about the Lord who is God Almighty. Niranjan, they call it Nirahankar, every sort of words which start with Nir, Nihi. Now at every center, in the body you receive a different type of joy. Every center has a different type of joy and there are names for every types of joy you receive at every center when the Kundalini rises. But when the Kundalini comes into the Sahasrara, then the joy you receive is called as Nirananda. Nirananda. Now Ni means nothing else but Ananda. Nira. Also surprising, my name is Nira. Also in my family I am called as Nira. And Nira also means Mary, Mariam. Because it means marine, Nira is water. Nira means water in Sanskrit language. It is called as Nira Anand in the brain. And this stage ultimately unfolds. First what you know is the Sat. Is that true? What is this another gentleman is suffering from that you see on your fingers? First you see your fingers. With your attention you know what chakras, what fingers are catching, with your attention. Then with your brain you can depict what center which is catching. Because if you say this finger, that doesn't mean it is Vishuddhi's chakra. But your brain then says it is Vishuddhi. And that depicts it that this fellow is suffering from the troubles of the Vishuddhi. But still it is rational. Because you see what finger it catches and then you see. But when the Satya Khandra or the Sahasrara unfolds itself more, you don't have to think about it, you just say it. Then there is no difference between your chitta and your sat. The enlightened chitta and the enlightened brain become one. There is no problem at all for such a person, there is no need to see on the fingers. No need to say anything on the fingers and then depict it through brain, which you have learnt in Sahaja Yoga, that if you find something wrong here, it means Agya. That's not necessary. You just say Agya. And you just say it and it is there. Then it unfolds more. First it is integrated with, as I said, chit. Then when it gets absolutely integrated with the Spirit, then whatever you say is the truth. You just say it, it is so. That is how this brain unfolds into three new dimensions. First, it depicts the truth through logical conclusions. 
because I have told you that if this finger is catching, then it is Vishnu. And then you ask the person, have you got a problem here? He says, yes. Then you believe in me and then you believe that this is the Vishuddhi chakra which is showing is true. This is the logical conclusion. In a way that you have experimented, you are seeing, you are still doubting whether mother says it's true or not and then you are sure, yes, it is so, we have seen this is Vishuddhi chakra. So, the truth becomes logically acceptable to this brain, but still there is the brain working out on its gross level. Then the second stage, as I told you, where you believe, you know for definite that this means we should teach other, no doubt. Nobody, then, then we start, then we kalpa has started, then there's no doubt about me or Sahaja but then the new unfolding starts within. For that one has to do meditation. In humility one has to do meditation. And then also for this new dimension where your chitta itself becomes merged into your brain or into the enlightened brain, for that one has to very honestly and humbly surrender to Sahaja Now what do we do when we get our vibrations? We have different, different reactions. Some people do not even understand the value of vibrations. Some people try to learn what it means. And some people suddenly think, oh, now they are realized souls, they can go on giving realizations, this, that, they go on a ride of an ego trip. When they go on a ride of an ego trip, then they find that they have failed and they have to come back. From the very beginning they start. It's like the game of snake and ladder. So. The reaction to vibration should be a very humble, receptive reaction. Now on the gross level, because as I told you that the brain is the one which holds the father, so if we commit any sins against the father, then this unfoldment in the brain takes some time. So we start reading books and though people have told that first see the vibrations and then read the books, still we say, oh, what's wrong, we should read other books. You go down again. Snake and ladder, as I said, that is one of the snakes. We think that what is the need to do meditation, I have no time, I have this thing, that thing. We do not progress. The other point, which is very gross, also there are some very gross people in Sahaja Yoga who enter it. Doesn't matter. But first thing you must know, you have to be honest, very honest in Sahaja Yoga. The honesty is like I have seen people if you have a dinner, say for a marriage party, they'll just crawl into it without having any self-respect, without having any understanding as to who's going to pay for it, all this. They'll bring all their family, come down and sit. There are people who avoid paying money which should be paid for Sahaja Yoga, supposing they are eating food or they are traveling or they are coming from abroad, they have to pay money for their traveling, for their food. And sometimes, you know, I have to pay a lot of money. Doesn't matter, I don't mind. But it's not good for us. The main thing is not good. So, how you behave towards Sahaja Yoga as far as money is concerned, is also very important, though it looks gross, but it can give a big trouble 
in the unfoldment because of the nabi catching and as you know if the nabi catches it can spread up to the whole of void and if the void is catching ekadasha rudra which is placed here the destructive forces built in. so before coming to sa yoga it was all right you were doing all kinds of things and you would have smoothly gone to hell without any difficulties it is very easy to go to hell you can take two running jumps and go to hell the rest of it you should see but going to hell is the easiest thing for that you don't have to work hard or do anything but when you are ascending when you are rising then it is little different you have to be careful that you should not falter you should not fall and that you are ascending so you have to be very alert about yourself that you are not falling into the same habits which you had some people uh, have a habit of saving money at the cost of surgery some have a habit of making money at the cost of surgery some people have habit of not giving the due amount i like that it's it's something you know of cheating they all go out of sahaja yoga in no time they may be looking like great leaders in the beginning but they go out just like that and many a time people tell me mother why don't you keep a proper account and all that but in sahaja yoga i am not supposed to keep any accounts or anything because my accountants are sahaja yogis if you try to play tricks with sahaja yoga immediately you are pushed out in your way in your navi chakra you are never help you may make a thousand rupees year but you will thousands of rupees by getting into trouble you will have any kind of a problem that i cannot tell and then you will say how did i get this much so navi chakra if you are not honest in your seeking honesty of seeking not only means i want to seek it also means what is your behavior is towards yourself and towards others you have to be honest with yourself that you sit down for meditation try to improve your antar yoga try to make your uh thoughtless awareness this feeling of thoughtlessness wider and wider try to achieve that state where you really feel thought so the honesty lies as you rise higher and higher deeper and deeper into your own being first to depend on me that after all mother is going to do it when i went to mother my sister was out this thing happened then this thing happened but what about you doing something that helps you to open your sastra so opening of the sastra is very important now surprisingly it is so placed that sastrara has got the brahmarandra at the level where there is i mean at the point where there is the heart chakra so we must know that brahmarandra is directly connected to your heart if it is not done from the heart superficially done sahaja you cannot go very high you have to put your full heart in that is the main thing like people they come to sahaja and they are murmuring behind this could have been like that that could have been like that uh, all those things all such people also are what christ calls as murmuring souls he said that be careful about these murmuring souls those who go on murmuring behind and taking advantage uh, as if uh, they they are trying to save others all such people also can suffer a lot because they are doing a double game and such a double game is very dangerous when you enter into the kingdom of god any kingdom you are member of any kingdom 
if you are treacherous to that kingdom, you are punished. But in the God's kingdom, it's so blissful, absolutely blissful. Complete blessings are poured on, absolutely with everything, health, well, mental, emotional, all kinds of prosperity you can get in such no doubt. But when you are so much blessed, you are also forgiven and forgiven and forgiven and there is a long rope given to you to hang yourself, but you really hang fully. It's not half. So those people who think they can be dishonest with Sahaja Yoga have to be very careful, please don't do it. If you don't like to be in Sahaja Yoga, you better go away. It's better from your point of view and from our point of view also. Because in case you are dishonest, you are trying to play tricks and games and you suffer, and you look funny and strange, then people will say, what's wrong with Sahaja? So we will unnecessarily suffer because we cannot show you in the mirror that this man has been very, very uh, disloyal. We cannot show that. So it will bring a bad name to us, first of all. And secondly, you will be harmed by this kind of a thing. If you are harmed, then also we'll have a bad name that how could it happen? But if you are honest about Sahaja Yoga and about your seeking, you don't know how much God looks after you. Anybody who tries to do any harm to you will be very badly harmed and removed from your path. God protects you out and out and He looks after you with complete attention and care. And He's so loving that description of His compassion cannot be given in words, but can be only felt and understood. Now the problem is, people who are dishonest are because of their background sometimes, because of their education, because of their upbringing, or maybe because they are cowards. But there is also another thing that can make you dishonest is your Purva Janmas and that's how you take your birth and your Kundali is made like you. But after realization, those people who are of a great valor and great self, strength ascend so fast that all the problems of the stars, all the problems of your nakshatras and all that constellations, everything disappears and you become a Sahaja Yogi means a newly born, absolutely a different personality. It has nothing to do from where you are. Like an egg be becoming a beautiful bird. So this Kundalini, when it arrives here, the first hurdle the Kundalini has enter into Sahasrara is Eka Dasha Rudra. There are eleven Rudra Shaktis, eleven destroyed Shaktis placed here. Five on this side, five on the other side and one in the center. These are obstruction within us built by two kinds of sins we come. If we bow our head to wrong type of gurus and submit ourselves to their vicious ways, then we develop Rudrash. Rudra problems on the left hand side, these five go out.
if you have, I think it's the other way now. <laughs> it's the if you have bow because I've never bowed to anybody wrong, so I don't know what you said. <laughs> the mistake comes from there. <laughs> if you bow to someone who is a wrong type of a person and who is anti God. Then the problem comes on this side of the thing, on the right side. If you have the sense that I can look after myself, I'm my own guru, I, uh, who can teach me, I don't want to listen to anybody and I don't believe in God, uh, who is God, I just don't care for God. All such feeling, if you have, then your right side doesn't catch, but the left side catches. Because right side moves this side and the left side this side. So these ten things, and one is Virata Vishnu, because also in the stomach we have got ten Guru Sthanas and one that of Vishnu. So the Seeking is also there, as well as these ten gurus are there. Then you develop this ekadasha rupa. When this thing is settled, set in within you, as I said, one on this side, one on that side. So those people who are about the wrong type of people develop a temperament or a kind of a personality which is very vulnerable for incurable diseases like cancer and all that. You may develop cancer or any such disease. Those who are bowed to wrong type of people. Now those who think I am better than anybody else, I don't care for God, I don't want God, I have nothing to do, all such people. Develop the left side, Ekadasha. And left side Ekadasha is extremely dangerous too because such people develop the problems of the right side, heart attacks, physically absent and all other problems of the right side. So one of the greatest hurdles of Kundalini entering into Sastrara is this Ekadasha which comes from world. And which covers the Medha, is the plate of the brain. And that is how it cannot enter into the limbic area. Even those who have been to wrong gurus, if they have reached right conclusion and surrendered themselves to Sajoga, accepting their mistakes, and saying that I am my own guru, they can be cured. And those who have been thinking that I am above all, I don't believe in God, who is God, I don't believe in any prophets or anything, anything against God or prophets is the same. Anti-God, personality, who talks like that, who develops problems, gets all right, if he humbles down himself and accepts Sahaja Yoga is the only way of, of entering into the super-consciousness. I have seen people who have been tantrikas are being saved. I have seen people who have done all kinds of wrong things have been saved. 
those people who were members of very funny, strange organizations have been seen. But uh, it is very difficult to convince anyone that whatever they are doing has been wrong and they should come to right path. So, a star came to play its part called Pluto. And this star is the one which has brought cancer, disease, because Pluto is the one that cures cancer or all such diseases which are incurable. So those people who just go headlong into wrong paths, suffer from funny type of heart troubles, palpitations, insomnia, vomitings, giddiness, all sorts of, uh, we can say, irrelevant talking. It is a very serious thing to go to a wrong guru and bow to it becomes a closed area for such a person. The persons who are against Sahaja Yoga have a very strong Sahaja like a nut, in the sense that it's such a strong shell that you cannot just break. It's a strong shell, like a thick nut. Even if you want to use a hammer, you cannot break it. Today the time has come that you have to recognize Sahaja. You have to. You did not recognize any saints, any prophets, anyone, any incarnations. But today the condition is that you have to recognize if you do not recognize it, your sastrara cannot be open because this is the time when the sastrara was open and you have to have your realization. So it's a very important thing that you have to recognize Sahaja. There are many people who say that, Mother, why to believe in Sahaja Yoga this way? We can just call you just Mother, you could be my mother, you see. All right, doesn't matter but you can't get your realization. And even if you get it, you cannot retain it. So you have to recognize, recognition is the only worship of Sahaja. Recognition is the only worship where you want to know God in Sahaja. All the other ganas, devtas, deities, shaktis are one in unijan in Sahaja. And anyone who does not recognize Sahaja Yoga, they just are not bothered about you, what sort of a person you are. For example, a man who worships you, he comes to me, and I find his heart is catch. Surprise. He says, Mother, I worship Shiva. How is it my heart is catch? I said, You have to recognize Sahaja. Just ask Shiva. And when he asks the questions to Shiva, then only the vibrations start flowing. So, Sahasrara takes charge that it makes you recognize and also it convinces you to prove it. And by this proving, even if you are not recognizing, then you cannot get your realization. 
but those who recognize also recognize partly they take liberties they behave in a funny manner without understanding that who is this person who is here i have seen many a times i am talking people are just putting their hands up kundalini so they are just talking chit chatting i am surprised because if you have recognized then you should know who you are facing because it's not for my good i am not going to lose anything but only you in your ascent have not recognized that shows that you have not recognized and the way some people try to monopolize me also is absolutely wrong there is no need to monopolize me nobody can monopolize there are some people who say that mother must have misunderstood i never misunderstand there's no question or some people try to tell me do this do that that also not necessary try to open yourself to this protocol which is very important in sahaj yoga which i have told for the first time today that you must try to recognize in a full way and if you do not recognize i am sorry i can't give you the realization which will sustain i it will start but it may not sustain so this is the simplest way of achieving your higher things is by recognizing gradually and recognizing gradually it is very difficult to tell anybody if something is wrong with that person it's impossible after sa yoga i can tell you this chakra is catching that chakra is catching but also because you know what does that chakra means you can come back on you know no mother you see it's not so i am not that's not so why should i tell you you are catch you have to cleanse yourself with full honest but first thing is to recognize with full humility and understand once you have recognized gradually you will do everything that has to be done you know what is to be Now the essence of sastrara is integration. In sastrara, all the chakras are there, so all the deities get integrated, and you can feel their integration. That means when you get your kundalini in sastrara, your mental, emotional, and your spiritual, everything. being becomes one your physical being also merges into it then you have no problem as to uh, yes i love mother but uh, i'm sorry uh, i have to steal this money yes i know i recognize mother yes i know she is great but i can't help it i have to tell her lies or i have to do this wrong thing because after all uh i can't help it there is no compromise with me it has to be completely integrated your dharma should be corrected you cannot do anything wrong and then say i am a sadhguru you can but for this the strength comes from within your spirit strengthens you you must just put in your will power that yes let my spirit act and then you start acting according to the spirit once you start acting according to the spirit you find you have no slavery of anything you become samarth means equal to your means samarth also samarth means powerful personality so you develop that powerful personality which has no temptations which has no wrong ideas which has no catches no problems but people who are sneaky sly try to try play some tricks 
are really harming themselves, not Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is going to be, it has been and will be, is going to be established. Even if there are ten people in the boat, God is not bothered. It's only my bother, Asha, as a mother. As a mother, I want many people to come up in the boat, but don't try to ch- jump back by doing all dishonest things. So this is what it is simple, that you are integrated. By integration you get the power to do what you understand and you have power to feel happy with what you understand. So you come to a stage where you develop this Niranam, and this Niranam you develop when you are absolutely the Spirit. In Irananda state, there is no duality left, it's Advaita, it's one personality. That is, you are completely integrated and the joy is not any more dented, it's complete. It hasn't got a happiness and a sorrow aspect, but it's just joy. The joy is not that you laugh loud, the joy is not that uh, you, you, you're always smiling, it's the stillness, the quietude within yourself, the peace of your being, of your spirit, that asserts itself into vibrations. It, you feel that when you feel that peace, you feel like light of the sun, the whole rays of that beauty spreading. But first of all, we are cowed down by our own personal, selfish, stupid ideas. Throw them out. We have them because we are insecure, because we have wrong ideas. Throw them out. Just stand alone, one with God, and you will find all these fears were useless. Our cleansing is very important and that cleansing comes only when you really practice the cleansing as told in Sahasrara. The Sahasrara is the blessing of the heavens, I should say. It has worked out so well. It's very difficult to break the Sahasrara and when I really broke it, I didn't know that it would be that successful. First I thought it's still premature because there are many Rakshasas still on the street selling their goods and there are many fanatics who are calling themselves by the so-called religions they are following, not the real religion of the earth, but gradually it has taken its now let this truth take its root within yourself through your sastra. And once this truth becomes absolutely the light that guides you, the light that nourishes you, the light that enlightens you and gives you a personality that has the light, then only you should know that your sastra is completely enlightened by your spirit. Your face should be such that people should know that there's a personality who's standing before you who is light. This is how Sastrara is to be looked after. For looking after Sastrara, it is important that you should try to cover your head during winter time. It's better to cover your head during winter time so that there is no freezing in the brain, because brain is also made of meda, means fats, so it should not be frozen. Moreover, you should not take too much heat on your brain. To keep your brain all right, you should not sit in the sun all the time, as some of the Westerners do. Then your brain melts and you become a crazy person. 
is a sign that a person is going out for madness. It's something which I have told many a times that don't take too much heat on your head. Even if you are sitting in the sun, keep your head covered. Covering of the head is very important, but the covering of the head should be done occasionally, not all the time, because if you just put a very heavy band around your head, then the circulation becomes poor and you may have trouble with bad circulation. So it is an occasional opening of the head to the sun and to the moon occasionally. Otherwise you will sit in the moon and land up in the lunatic asana. Anything I tell you, you must know that in Sahaja Yoga we have not to go to anything ati. Even sitting in the water, some people will sit for three hours. I never said to you. Only for ten minutes you have to sit but with full heart. If I tell them anything, they'll go on doing it for four hours. There's no need to do it for ten hours. Give your body different, different types of treatment. Not all the time the same thing. The body gets bored or gets absolutely uh, overburdened. Now if you tell somebody, this is your mom, all right, it is to be used till you get rid of your chakras, finished. Now something, some screw is to be put here, all right. Now what you do, you put the screw till it fixes. You do not go on, even when it is fixed, are you going to screw it more and more? so that uh, the whole thing gets spoiled. It's better that you use wisdom. And for this wisdom, we must know that it is Sri Ganesha or Jesus Christ who are placed on both the sides. Here is Maha Ganesha, here is Jesus Christ. Both of them help you to correct your vision, understanding and give you wisdom. So the wisdom lies not in sticking on to something. Sahaja yogis are not stuck up people. If they are stuck up, they are not progressing. You are not to get stuck up with ideas and stuck up with things. You have to be all the time moving. And in movement, it doesn't mean that you should fall from somewhere and people think, oh, we are earning such a lot because we are falling down. You have to ascend not to fall. So when you are achieving something in Sahaja Yoga, first of all, you should see your health should be alright. Your mind should be normal. You should be a normal person. If you are still barking at people, then know that there is something wrong. Or if you are still sulking and still tantrumish and if you are still uh, in a bad mood, then think you are not yet a surgeon. You can judge yourself. If you are free like a bird, then it's all right. But that doesn't mean on the road you start singing like a bird and jumping on a tree. You see, any analogy I give, a stupid man, he can behave in a very stupid way. But to a wise man, he discreetly uses it for a proper purpose. So one has to understand Sahaja Yoga is known by the discretion person. Now what happens actually that you get stuck with one thing that is your Atma and the whole your being floats like a Patanga does or uh, a kite that floats. Goes all over the places, everything, but you are stuck to one thing that is your spirit. And if you could really do it genuinely and honestly, not worry too much about your money and your families and other mundane things. Just don't worry about it. You don't have to worry. Just give it a month. If it doesn't work out, then work out, finish. What's that? No. If it works out, well and good. 
Not that your desire is important, but thy will be done. First you say, thy will be done. It is so surprising that your wills change, your desires change and whatever you say is done. But when this also comes up, people develop an ego. So be careful. It is all done by the Shakti and not by you. By your Atma and not by you. You have to be the Atma and once you become the Atma, you become into a karma where you don't know that you are doing it, just works out. You don't feel, you are not aware. I wish after all these lectures, most of your chakras must have been good. But this is all my work. You have to also do some homework and you have to also work and see for yourself, be alert. Try to face yourself in the mirror and see for yourself how far honest you have been, how far clean you have been, how far friendly you are in collectivity, which is a very important point in Sahaja Yoga. If you are not collective, if you are funny, if you are strange, if you cannot communicate with others, then something wrong. And then you should face yourself as you are and try to correct it. Because you separate yourself from yourself, like I separate my sari from myself and try to be in the same way. You separate yourself from yourself and try to be. This is the way Sahaja Yogis are going to ascend. When the Sahaja Yogis will ascend, the rest of the things also will ascend. Many Sahaja Yogis uh, of this kind will impress so many people that they will also ascend. So the whole thing can ascend very fast, but you people who are rising higher should try to rise higher and higher without being aware of it. That's very important. Those who are also, who think that others are higher than them are also sadly mistaken because that's not so. It's the whole that's right. Nobody should feel that way inferior or in any way low or feel insulted that somebody thinks me low. Let somebody think, what does it matter? Divine doesn't think so. So all these little, little things you should be careful about and otherwise it's very easy in this Krita Yuga achieve the ultimate goal of Atma Sakshatra. I think today I have told you quite a lot about Sastrara. But if you have any problem about Sastrara, you may ask me now, but only about Sastrara and nothing else is better to ask me questions about Sastrara instead of all other things. Yeah, this is the trouble with it. You read some nonsensical book, Samadhi, Bindu, this, that, all that. Now please forget it. Please forget all this. Samadhi. Samadhi means first is the Nirvichar Samadhi. First is there which are samadhi that you achieve when the kundalini just comes out of you. Samadhi means the dhi means the buddhi. And when it has got enlightenment, it means samadhi. So first of all, the buddhi gets enlightened. Just now I told you about that road, the first enlightenment. Now the bindu and this and that are higher stages are the bindu. Then bindu and then valaya. But you should not be futuristic. Just now if you have read some book, no use trying to show off that. That's not a good thing. Just try to see what you are. Why do you want to talk about things which, which do not concern at this stage? Just now, supposing you are go going by a bullock cart. Why do you want to ask about the aeroplane? Just now you go by a bullock cart, then you get into the train, then you get into the aeroplane. All right? One by one. Not like this. Because you have read the book, it's not doesn't mean that you are supposed to know everything. All these books are written by some sort of crankish fellows who have read something here and there and have put it down. But you must experience. I'm your mother, so I don't want to give you big idea on this and that. I want you to do the way we have to move. As a mother would say, now this is the way you are. Now you are in the first class, so pa pass your first exam. Then you will go into the second class and pass your exam. 
Everybody has to go that way to mature properly. There should be no immaturity in a personality. So all these books that you have read, you better throw them away. It's no good. But if it is by some realized source, you can keep them and think that they are higher people and we have to be at their stage. Only by reading the book you don't become those personalities, do you? Mata Purza ka? Asla is Prashna. All such questions are there, one better than the other. I tell you, it is such an empty thing. How can you be satisfied with empty thing? You haven't got any. First of all, achieve a state. First of all, settle down. Gradually you will know about it. By reading books, you do not become any way realized soul do you? According to Mr. Kulkani, all questions are of this type. They are of no use. That only means that you have read some books, that's all, finished. Nothing more than that. And it's true. If you have just read some books, you are just coming and quoting here, no use. Gradually come up. If you are honest and if you want to have it, then come up gradually. Just don't try to show off anything. You better give in writing. There is a request that you please give a part of your lecture in Hindi because some people cannot understand English, they find it. All right. You see, now I have given my lecture in English, but I I give my lectures in Hindi also in different places. Here I am giving in English. So those who want to hear me in Hindustani can come to other programs. Where are you from? Gandhi Bhavan. Gandhi Bhavan, in Delhi I speak in Hindi. Then what's your name? Seven Tari Kshan. Seven Tari Kshan. Go there. You will listen to Hindi. You will listen to all the languages in Hindi. हिंदी में आपको सुना देंगे फिर कालका जी भी जा रहे हैं दस तारीख को और कहाँ पे जा रहे हैं नौ तारीख को कहाँ जंगपुरा में नौ तारीख को जा रहे हैं वहाँ सब हिंदी बोलते हैं अभी मंदिर में गए थे वहाँ हिंदी बोले थे आठ तारीख को सब घर जा रहे हैं एनक्लेव में सब पते आप ले लीजिए वहाँ पे शिफ्ट ये सिर्फ ध्यान में बैठे रहते हैं ये तो नहीं कभी कहते कि आप हर समय अंग्रेजी में बोलिए हम इतने दूर से आए हैं इतना रुपया खर्चा कर कोई भी नहीं ऐसा कहते क्या पुस्तकी ही कॉल्स इट पुस्तकी पुस्तकी क्वेश्चंस पुस्तकी यू सी इट इज नथिंग डिवाइन इट्स ऑल पुस्तकी इट्स इज ट्रू दैट्स वाई � Padhi padhi pandita murakha bhai. Now I know what, why he said it. Because by reading, people really become funny and they just try to test me, my knowledge, or try to show off their own knowledge. Kaya pustaki? What is the relation between Kundalini, Prana, Astral, Body and Soul? Are they same or are they same but different forms? Astral body, Prana, Kundalini and Soul. Soul. Now this gentleman, who has asked the question perhaps has come only today. Otherwise I have explained most of these things. But for your benefit I'll tell you. First is Kundalini. Kundalini is the pure desire to be one with God and this energy is placed in the sacrum bone which is awakened when some authorized person from God can raise it. This is Kundalini. It's pure desire. <coughs> now prana is the Shakti, expression of the Shakti of the right side, that is Mahasaraswati. is created out of five elements called prana. Astral, what? Astral body. Astral bodies are in Simple Hindi language are Bhuts and they are the people who just 
come into your being and take your soul out. Never try these tricks. Never. These tricks are tried in America very much. And I've told them not to try such tricks and horrible things are happening because a person living in Geneva had a child and in, in uh, you know English people don't keep their children sleeping with them. So the child used to sleep in another room. And the lady, her grandmother, who was fond of this child, wanted to talk to the child through this astral body business. And every night she used to talk to the child. Ultimately, so happened that the soul of the child which she used to call out could not return back to the body, it got lost and the child died. It has so many problems, astral body things, that it is nothing but a dead soul from the left or the right can come into you and can carry your soul out of your body and you can be lost, you can be dead. So this is something going just the other way round than the Kundalini awakening. By Kundalini awakening, your prana shakti and your manashakti are integrated and you become one with the Divine, so your super-consciousness is awakened. I can feel the Kundalini reaching my head, but I can't feel it come out and I can't feel the full vibration. That is good. Somebody is feeling the Kundalini on their head. That is what uh, Kabir Das has clearly said. Shunya shikhara para anahadavai. So the anadahata is, uh, is hitting the fontanel bow, but it is not coming out. That's it. Then means it has not broken the Brahmarandra, simple as that. Till it has not broken the Brahmarandra, you cannot feel the full breeze. It's absolutely spontaneous. It has to work out that way. So it's correct, your Brahmarandra is not broken, that is your state. So it has to break. And the reason for that is something wrong with your heart. If your heart is clean, it will break. If your heart is strong, it will break. But if you have a weak heart also, it will not break. If you are suffering from heart trouble, it will not break. It has something to do with your heart. If you are a seeker of other things than spirit, also it may not break. So there are many reasons, various reasons, why this Brahmarandra won't break. But what is the reason that we have to find out? Yourself. You can face yourself and find out what's the matter. दे दीजिए उनको दे दीजिए वो मैंने वाइब्रेशन वाला अभी देखा था वो मैंने क्या वाइब्रेशन का ही कपटे अभी इन्होंने बोला ब्रह्मरंध्र विल वर्क इट आप विल वर्क इट आप कोई और है सीधा डर मार विल वर्क इट आप डोंट यू वाले इट विल वर्क हाँ इट टेक्स सम टाइम्स लिटिल टाइम डर मार व्हाई शुड यू है who else? What else is there? One man says, we had met Muktananda, now we finally want to be closely with your Sahaja Yoga Meditation Center. I fully believe that we will be able to achieve the main aim of life by the realization. Other please advise and awaken our Kundalini, so as to get rid of all physical and mental limits. Ah, this is Muktananda. Are you bad, are you bad? Terrible fellow. Uh, there is a mantra for it. Who are the people of Muktananda? Just raise your hands, please. Those who have written this letter about Muktananda, raise your hand, please. So now we'll tell you the mantra how to get rid of the problem. All right? There's a mantra for that. Who he was in the past life and all that I know, and we know how to get rid of it. But you have to religiously, do it. religiously do it and you'll get rid of it. I know it has, it has done a lot of harm to many people, but if those who are not anymore into the clutches, we can work it out, all right? So all those who are 
wanting to know about it, you will know in our centers or if you can come on the sites, I'll ask somebody to help you. All of those of that kind. Now what else is there? प्रवीण हो सके मैं आपके सामने ही हूँ शतकोटि अच्छा आ जाइए आप इस तरफ में सब लोग पार हो जाएंगे should come on this side and that side and all of them should be worked out we have lots of surgeries from all over the world and everybody must get realized <laughs> no doubt physically i am fit no heart problems my problem is that i think too much about myself result is that i have become a psychic case all right those who have a psychic case also should come this side and we'll tell them how it arises from where all right this so kindly advise being a new surgeon may i practice meditation in office keeping your photo before me during office hour sometime we spare we have spare time gossiping taking tea etc i want that time to be utilized in surgeon or meditation in office although i started doing the meditation in my house before sleep kind of advice and give away to no not in the office you cannot do uh, meditation in the office at all you see you have to be very careful actually you see office people are so gross and they will never understand surjo so best thing is first to talk to them about surjo not about me don't even show them my photograph because it's very funny that some people who see my photograph are frightened they can't see me if they are possessed they even shake before me So it's better not to tell them about me, but about Sir Yoga. How you are helped gradually with great care, like a nice mother. You must bring them to the position where they can receive realization, and then gradually open the thing. But not in the office, please. No, not in the office. You have to do it at home, and you have to do it in the group where you meet in the centers. That you must do every week. that is very important <laughs> and once a month in the ashram once a month in the ashram so he says should what do yogic asanas and pranayams should what do transcendental meditation second question kya transcendental ka kya transcendental meditation should we do tm is done <laughs> is done all that Now about pranayama and about I have already talked about it, but you might have come now pranayama and all these physical exercises of hatha yoga and all that I have already told that in hatha yoga we too do some exercises quite a lot uh, for physical fitness sometimes sometimes for adjusting our chakras and all that and for uh, improving the backbone we do exercises but we have to know what chakra is that. This is science. It's not done that your throat is bad and you are doing all the asanas for the stomach. All the asanas are not done. like uh, taking all the medicines at the same time. One is for cold, one is for heat. It's like that. All the medicines we don't take. So according to need of the person, we do pranayama. Also, we do according to the need of the person gradually. we understand what is wrong with us and that's how we do with asana not blindfolded first thing then about transcendental med- med- meditation less said the better you have to see for yourself what others have achieved you see when you go to guru you must first find out how much money he takes if he takes the money just don't go first thing secondly how does he live what is his style of life Thirdly, what others have achieved? What is their condition? Most of the disciples of transcendental meditations are now beggars on the street. 
and some of them are epileptic patients. I have seen so many getting epilepsy. <laughs> so if you have done transcendental meditation, it is not meditation but it is anti-God thing. So you have to first neutralize yourself, come down to normal conditions and then you receive your realization. We have a lady here who was a granddaughter of a Jew. She lost all her money and her husband was the director of one of these flying squads that he was at. He lost all his money, he became bankrupt. This lady got epilepsy, he got epilepsy, her child got epilepsy, all of them got epilepsy. They came to Sahaja Yoga when they had nothing with them. Today they are all right, all corrected and they are doing well. But we do not take a guarantee on anything. Because you have to also decide in your mind that you are not going to have these funny ideas because some of the TM people who come are so arrogant and so egoistical that it is impossible to manage them. So it is your need, not our need. And that's how you should come to a doctor as a patient comes. Then only to work. Otherwise don't waste ever our time. Please. Kind. Right? Now all the questions are over. Sab log apni aankhe band kar. Sahaja Yoga mein bhaasha samanye ki zarurat nahi hai. Kyunki ye kaam dimaagi jama khash nahi hai. Is mein aap ko haath ke ishare samanye chahi. Aap apni aankh puri tarah se band kar. Par zor se dabane ki zarurat nahi. Sarva sadhaan tarikhe se aap apni aankh. Keep yourself steady. अपने को स्थिर करें थोड़ा। स्थिर करके आँख बंद रखें, हाथ मेरी ओर करें, और न गर्दन पीछे की ओर मोड़े, न आगे की ओर बिल्कुल स्थिरता से बैठे। अपनी ओर देखें। अब दूसरों की नहीं सोचें। आँख बंद करके अपनी ओर। ये तो आपकी शारीरिक स्थिति है। और मानसिक स्थिति ऐसी होनी चाहिए कि आप नहीं है ये माँ के लिए एक लीला है खेल है इसलिए प्रसन्न चित्त बैठे प्रसन्न चित्त इसका मतलब नहीं कि आप हंस हंस कर बैठे पर खुशी खुशी बैठे परेशान होकर बैठने की बात नहीं इसमें कोई परेशानी नहीं होगी कोई आपको तकलीफ नहीं होगी बहुत आसानी से कुंडलिनी जागृत हो सकती है इसलिए आप कोई भी घबराहट के बगैर बड़े आराम से बैठे बिल्कुल किसी भी घबराहट के ना गर्दन को ऊपर ताना है ना नीचे झुकाना है एक बीचो बीच अपनी गर्दन को रखें
There should be no shaking, nothing. Be steady, be steady. Still ho ke bethe. Kuch hila nahi, dhulla nahi, koi shariir ke jit. Aav, haav, koi karne ki bethe. Shant rahe. Jho cheez hai, andar ghati. Ye antar yoga hai, ye apne andar ghati hota hai. चित्त को सहस्त्रार की ओर रखें चित्त को अपने तालु की ओर रखें कीप योर अटेंशन टुवर्ड्स द फॉन्टेनेल बोन एरिया टुवर्ड्स द ब्रह्म रन कीप बोथ द हैंड्स स्ट्रेट टुवर्ड्स मी स्ट्रेट नॉट टुवर्ड्स योर सेल्फ बट कीप बोथ द हैंड्स स्ट्रेट टुवर्ड्स मी Now see for yourself from your head, with your right hand on top of your head, if there's a cool breeze coming up. Adhantri, upar pakli, upar pakli. Shute huye, sab log dekhe, sab log dekhe, ye ne ki kuch dekhe hai, kuch nahi dekhe. अब दोनों हाथ ऊपर कर मेरी और दोनों हाथ करें और एक सवाल पूछे कि मां क्या ये ब्रह्म शक्ति है मन में पूछे 
پہلی مرتبہ آپ کے ہاتھ میں برہم شکتی لگی پہلی مرتبہ یہ سوکشم شکتی آپ کے اندر محسوس ہوئی کیونکہ آپ سوکشم ہو اب ہاتھ پیچھے کرو اب شانت ہے بہت زیادہ آرگیمنٹ آدھی کرنے کی ضرورت نہیں کیونکہ یہ چیز آرگیمنٹ سے نہیں سمجھائی جا سکتی نہ سمجھی جا سکتی اس لئے جو جن کو پار ہو گئے وہ شانت رہے اور جو نہیں ہوئے ہیں وہ لوگ اگر ہونا چاہیں تو سینٹر پہ آئیں اور یا تو یہاں چاہیں تو ادھر آ جائیں یہ لوگ ان کو دیکھیں اور اس کے بعد تین اور پروگرام ہیں وہاں آپ ضرور آئیے گا اور اگلے سال میں پھر آؤں گیا ہر سال آتی ہوں ہر سال آپ کی پرگتی اور ہونی چاہیے اور آپ بڑھنے چاہیے اور دھیرے دھیرے سب بڑھ رہے ہیں جن لوگوں کو ابھی تک ہاتھ میں ٹھنڈک نہیں آئے وہ لوگ اگر اس طرف آ جائیں تو یہ لوگ دیکھیں